Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. F -F Episode 1412. 1412, and I'm Mike Matthews, broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mont. I'm the last place on earth is where we are, and I am bringing you this show early on a Wednesday. It's 5.42 in the morning here on the Pacific Coast, west side of the United States of America. Mike's Daily Podcast. It's Shelly Schuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, and John Deere, the engineer, stopping by. And I guess I gotta sing a song. Mike's Daily Podcast. Well, apparently Disney is going to leave Netflix. And that means I am really ticked off because I wanted to watch all their movies and I didn't. I guess they're still up for now, but soon they isn't going to be on there. I'm talking Zootopia and the Star Wars Mike's daily podcast movies. They did the Rogue One. I haven't watched that one yet, so I need to get on that because I finished Doc Martin and Mike's what a sad ending. Daily I mean, the guy has podcast. Uh, what is it? He's autistic. Yeah. And he can't emotionally connect with the beautiful Louisa. But Louisa loves him. Yet he can't really, he loves her, but he can't really show his love because he has, he's a block. He's blocked, his emotions are blocked. He's a poor doc. So eventually Netflix will put the rest of the episodes up there. Right now it's only the first like eight seasons. Hey, look who just walked in. Hello, my guys. My, hello, my guys. He's a Shelly Schuhart Construct Supervisor. What in the heck are you talking about? I'm talking about the, the fact that I want lasers. Sharks with laser beams attached to their heads. Hey, look who else walked in. Oh, my this is Floyd the Floor Man. This is John Deere, the engineer. I think that's impossible to put lasers on sharks' heads. Wouldn't they get electrocuted in the water? Mm. That's a good point. We don't want that. Electrocuted sharks. Because they're wonderful. And they're smart, and they can fly. It's 130% true. But whatever, What I'm. my point being that Doc Martin... Not the entire episodes are up on Netflix, and I hope they are soon. But Disney is leaving Netflix, and that's sad. Oh, wait. And here's today's podcast picture. I think this is the way, though, of the world, and all the big uh, movie companies will start their own streaming services, because that's what Disney's going to do. HBO's already done it. CBS, others, so it's going to happen. And there'll be some, you know, some... It'll be like like what I do with my podcast. I'm on a myriad of websites and lined up and affiliated with all these different companies like Mixcloud, Spreaker, Podomatic, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, YouTube. Although my SoundCloud page, all I have up are music interviews. But, you know, I'm on YouTube and the iTunes and everything. So, I think at some point there'll be some cross-pollinization. But, you know, it's a big undertaking for a company, a movie company, to say, Hey, I'm going to stream. I'm taking my product off of other sites. We'll see what happens. But, I bet this, this, this might hurt Netflix a little bit. Hey, John Lee Dog Park is a new dog park that I discovered. I was, and I stumbled upon it. It was exciting. I was walking Basil the Boxer. I was in San Mateo, which is Spanish for St. Matthews, or something to that effect. For I am Miguel Mateo. But yeah, John Lee Dog Park, not to be confused with John Lee Hooker. A boom, 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 dun, 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 dun. a boom, 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 boom. <coughs> I got a little bluesy, y'all. Is right there. It's close to the other dog park. I think I posted a picture of Seal Point last week, and I was talking about uh, Seal Point Harbor Dog Park and meeting my ex-brother-in-law there, and we had a good time 
on the weekend. Well, also that same day I went over to, I just happened to walk, I saw this cool bit of water, which is what this picture is, yet another picture of water, for I am fascinated by it. And the sun was starting to set, and I'm like, what's this little area? And I parked the car and I walked Basil the Boxer over there. Next thing I know, I'm at a dog park and there's nobody there. It's just me and this other guy. And I start asking him questions. The funny thing though about this dog park is there are weird signs. And this is sort of true of wherever you go on that side of the bay. There's see actually all over the Bay Area. I've talked about this before. There are just too many signs, ridiculous signs. It's okay to say don't do this or no this, no and oh this. No podcasting here, whatever it is. The sign is. But this John Lee dog park had a sign that said, follow the rules and we'll continue this dog park. A threat. It was a threat. This sign was a threat. And I told the guy, did you see that sign? And he goes, what? No, I didn't. I said, well, how new is this park? He said, well, it's about a year old. He goes, but they just built that beautiful. uh, There's like a, a, when you walk into the dog park, there's an arch. And at the top of the arch, there's an actual picture of John Lee that's been etched into metal. I mean, they spent some money on this. So... Would they tear this all down if somebody didn't follow the rules about the dog park? Which I think the rules were something to the effect of pick up the dog's poo. Which most dog owners know, although I know there are you idiots out there. Not you listening to the podcast, but you, uh, a a mystical you. Specifically a guy I used to know named Robert. Who I used to walk dogs with And he would just let his dog poop on The laziest idiot Used to upset the crap out of me When he would do that But enough scatological talk Hey it's You you need to pick up after your dog Carry several plastic bags That's what plastic Plastic bags are a dog owner's best friend Which by the way My dog, uh, his foot got caught in a little crack in the ground yesterday. It was a very freak thing. And he sort of fell down. And then he got up and he was limping a little bit. And that was a little terrorizing yesterday. Uh, But he's okay this morning, so that's good. Yay. Okay. I was going to have a little sound effect of applause right there. And then I was going to tell you... This dog park. Oh, too many signs in Foster City and San Mateo. Everywhere you look, signs. Someday I will take a picture of all the ridiculous signs that are everywhere. That just tell you, that that just reiterate common sense. But I guess there are a lot of stupid people in the Bay Area that, that would not use their common sense. At any rate, John Lee Dog Park. And it is, uh, right next to this big lagoon. And there's all these lagoons and and waterways that go... uh, There's a seal slow... And and all these places in Foster City... That connect then to Foster City and go on and on and on. But unlike what I'm talking about here... I'm going to stop what I'm talking about here... And go to the website mikesdailypodcast.com... Which is a wonderful place... That you can see all the past podcast pictures... And you can help out the show through the Amazon link. Click on that and buy whatever it is you're going to buy. And that will help us out. There is also the PayPal. You can help us out that way. You'll get a special greeting from all the Cafe Anyway characters. And there are all the links to all the places you can listen to the show. And all the past podcast pictures. All that. And past interviews at Mike'sDailyPodcast.com. But we're going to do a segment today that has to do with news. This is News Random. We got a lot to get to, and we'll crunch it all into about a four or five minute space here. News Random. Is that why you're bald, Mike? (laughs) First, let's start with the big news about North Korea saying today it is considering plans for a missile strike. Considering plans for a missile strike on Guam. I knew a guy uh, at a radio station. This is back early early days of radio when I was first starting in radio uh, early or late 80s early 90s and this guy we were working in Thousand Oaks 
and he wasn't making any money in radio in Thousand Oaks, so he left Thousand Oaks and moved to Guam, where he wasn't making any money in radio at Guam. But, yeah, he was moving to Guam, and he was all excited. Um, this is just hours after President Donald Trump told the North that any threat to the United States would be met with fire and fury. The sharp increase in tensions rattled financial markets and prompted warnings from U.S. officials and analysts not to engage in rhetorical slang matches with North Korea, which regularly threatens to destroy the U.S. North Korea said it was carefully examining a plan to strike Guam, which is home to about 163,000 people and a U.S. military base that includes a submarine squadron, an air base, and a Coast Guard group. A Korean People's Army spokesman said in a statement carried by a state-run KCNA news agency, the plan would be put into practice at any moment once leader Kim Jong-un makes a decision. Guam Governor Eddie Calvo dismissed the threat and said the island was prepared for any eventuality with strategically placed defenses. He said he had been in touch with the White House and there was no change in the threat level. In a small show of goodwill, though, North Korea said it had released a Canadian pastor serving a life sentence there on humanitarian grounds. Washington has warned it is ready to use force if needed to stop North Korea's ballistic missile and nuclear programs, but that it prefers global diplomatic action, including sanctions. Um, Trump was prompted to say his little thing yesterday about fire and fury like the world had never seen um, echo, and uh, that was in response to the fact that the North Koreans apparently have been able to miniaturize uh, a nuclear warhead to be able to put it on a missile a ballistic missile um, Trump's warning that North Korea would experience fire and fury uh, has a remarkable escalation of military rhetoric with little precedent in the modern era, historians and analysts say. Mr. Trump's menacing remarks echo the tone and cadence of Harry S. Truman, who in 1945, uh, in an address announcing that the United States had dropped a nuclear bomb on Hiroshima, urged the Japanese to surrender, warning that if they did not, they may expect a rain of ruin from the air, the like of which has never been seen on this earth. It is not clear whether Mr. Trump intended the historical parallel. White House officials did not respond to questions about how much planning went into the, this brief statement or what was intended by the alliterative language, but it was a stark break with decades of more measured presidential responses to brewing foreign conflicts. Mr. Truman delivered his muscular... Trump and Truman, they both start with T-R-U... M... From Mr. Truman delivered his muscular message at a time when the U.S. had an overwhelming military advantage over Japan, which did not have a nuclear weapon. Mr. Trump's threat was aimed instead at a government that has apparently made significant strides in acquiring one. President Dwight D. Eisenhower used to say that the more shrill the Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev was in the language he used against the United States, promising we will bury you and we were turning out missiles like sausages, the more tempered he would be. And John F. Kennedy was similarly restrained in his rhetoric in the run-up to the Cuban Missile Crisis. Now back to Guam. Residents of the tiny Pacific island of Guam said they're afraid of being caught in the middle of the escalating tensions between the U.S. and North Korea. Though local officials downplayed any threat, people who live and work on the island, which serves as the launching pad for the U.S. military, said today they can no longer shrug off the idea of being a potential target. A 37-year-old bus driver for a tour bus company in Guam said, I'm a little worried, a little panicked. Is this really going to happen if it... It's just me, I don't mind, but I have to worry about my son. I feel like moving out of Guam now. Guam is used to the threats from North Korea, but advances in the country's nuclear program paired with fiery rhetoric from President Donald Trump has raised the already high animosity and heightened worries that a miscalculation might spark conflict between the nuclear-armed nations. Reports suggest that North Korea mastered a technological hurdle needed to strike the U.S. with a nuclear missile. However, 
And I want to stray from this Associated Press article by saying, I have also heard that the re-entry of their missile did not work. That ballistic missile that they... I, I don't hear anybody talking about this, but the ballistic missile that they launched, its re-entry was not... Uh, was not correct and that took the US and China many many years to figure out how that technology worked so I don't know if that's a thing or why they left that out of this Associated Press article but fake news no it's I think that we can pretty much glean the facts from that story people in Guam are worried well We hope people calm down and cooler heads prevail, obviously. Facebook has killed LifeStage, the standalone app. It has a, a, it's a dedicated social network for high schoolers and it's gone. LifeStage was pulled from the app store just a few days ago. A Facebook spokeswoman confirmed to Business Insider yesterday. The Snapchat-like app hadn't been updated for months and never managed to crack the App Store's top charts during its short lifespan. Created by 20-year-old Facebook employee Michael Samen, LifeStage was intended to help teens find and connect with other classmates who went to their school. Instead of direct messaging, high schoolers were supposed to use the app to share selfies and videos that all their classmates could watch. It was so focused on reaching high schoolers that it blocked people who had their ages listed over 21 and they uh, those people over 21 could not look up other accounts but anyone could easily enter their fake age and pretend pretend to be younger even though the age never managed to catch on among teens Facebook said that feedback from live stage has informed its other snap chat like camera centric slew of products can you name them Instagram. That's right. But you can follow me on Instagram. Mike's Daily Podcast is my name on Instagram. Facebook Stories also uses it. So, as we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. I would like to say bon voyage to Glenn Campbell. You may say, oh, Mike, he's just some country singer. Who who cares? He had some big songs. He had a lot of crossover hits. He had songs like Southern Nights, Have You Ever Felt That? Like a Rhinestone Cowboy. And then he also played, he was behind the music, the song uh, Classical Gas, which has the funniest name. In music, but it was a huge, one of the biggest instrumentals of all time. It was a big pop instrumental. It was played on the radio constantly in the 70s. Now, Glenn Campbell was also a big part of the Beach Boys. He also, he, he had a very interesting movie about him and how Alzheimer's, it really brought out the issue of Alzheimer's. And see that movie, is it called I'm Not Here? Or I'm not me or something to that effect, but you you really got a feel for what it's like for a family. If you've never dealt with Alzheimer's yourself, you really see what that what that whole uh, you know that what what goes on in people's lives and how they deal with that. So Gre- Glenn Campbell is now among the angels. What a life, though! What a life and. I remember he did a concert at the Ventura County Fair. I did not see it, but I was there at my stupid country station booth as people walked out of the concert saying, oh my gosh, that was freaking amazing. They all said to me, one by one. This was in the 90s. So, Glenn Campbell, never got to meet you, but have a wonderful afterlife. And you have a wonderful uh, now life. How's that? That's a great way to end the show. Yes. Next show, we're going to have the wonderful Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player and the brewmaster. Oh, it's 6.01. I got to go. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.